Hey everyone, welcome back to another K6 Office Hours. I'm Nicole van der Hooven. I'm Paul Baylog. And I'm Marie. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, three devils on the stream. <laughs> so today we are going to talk about Marie's, was it the first week or, or first weeks of, of being at K6 and specifically browser testing. Um, but I guess before we jump into that, let's talk about the things that have happened since the last time, which is namely that we have released version 0 0.40. Yay! And we need some sound bites, you know, with like the applause and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess we should need yeah. to prepare better for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, gotta get the stream deck um, uh, dusted off. Yeah. I have one, but anyway, uh, there there won't be a community call this time around because there are fewer changes, although some of them are pretty big, but stay tuned for uh, KSIX news done by our colleague Leandro Melendez, which should come out, I think, next week, but don't hold them to what I'm saying. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> could you talk about some of the the experimental changes? Sure, yeah. No, I was just going to say too. Yeah, Leandro has a bunch of stuff going on. He's uh, he's our he's uh, on the all road the all the time. <laughs> so it's uh, yeah. So one nothing. So what he we're lives on the road. Back. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Coming soon to a conference near you. Um, but uh, yeah, no. So yeah, so with zero dot forty, we had uh, to me the big thing is the uh, the extensions pipeline, if you will. Uh, we now have this experimental kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, namespace, so that uh, now you can have the web sockets. Uh, oh, I have to look at my notes again here. Uh, mm -hmm. Redis and timers. Um, those are, you know, they're XK6 web socket, XK6 Redis, XK6 timers, but now they're available in the core product as these experimental extensions. Now, this will be the the big thing is that this is going to be the process going forward of how we're going to bring in, um, you know, promote different extensions into core of K6. And what that means is that you don't need to use XK6. You don't need to recompile a new binary that adds this functionality. You're going to have it directly in there, but it still gives us the flexibility, given the name experimental, that we can make changes and break things as we need as things are evolving. So, but yeah, so it's pretty exciting though. So this way then you can start using Redis. You can have distributed tests where they're communicating and saving state in a shared location, Redis, um, and then also with the WebSocket. So this is a, it's, it's kind of a big deal. It's very cool. And it just takes, again, as the, uh, the screenshot there shows just including K6 slash experimental slash web sockets, and you can use it in your script. So I wanted to find an example of it. Here it is in our documentation. Yeah. So here's here's where you just import the K6 experimental Redis extension instead of having to use XK6, which is really cool. I'm I'm so excited for this. This has been one of the one of the stumbling blocks i guess to getting people to try out these awesome extensions just having to build that binary yourself can be a bit daunting yeah and it's it's really not that difficult out but you know it can be a little bit overwhelming at times if you're not you know used to having a go environment set up but uh yeah and i'm gonna put a plug in there for some work i'm doing uh you know, there'll be some guides coming up with a companion video and everything on using XK6, but, uh, you know, within Docker. So then that way, then you don't have to have the Go environment set up. That'll all be done inside of Docker containers. So hopefully all in the hopes that this makes it super easy to have a custom K6 with any of the extensions included. So, so coming soon. Awesome. Even, Can't wait for that, I'm actually. I'm not even going to give a timeline. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going yeah, there. I was just going to say, <laughs> you realize you've committed to those videos now, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Those you can't take happen. it back. It's just not, yeah, it's a matter of when. <laughs> when. Uh. 
Well, Marie, um, I know there were also some changes with XK6 browser in this release. I'm not actually too familiar with what they are. Could you yeah, tell us about that? So, yeah, so we've recently released uh, version 0 0.5.0. Uh, so um, I think I've mentioned on the previous office hours I was in that, yeah, XK6 browser is still in, you know, very early stages, but, you know, the team is really working hard in terms of getting new features in. So we've actually introduced um, a few breaking changes. Uh, the main thing was how we are importing um, the um, Chromium uh, object to launch, you know, the Chromium browser. So before you have to uh, import launcher directly, but now you can actually import the Chromium object. So um, it's a really first good step because at the moment we're only supporting Chromium, but you know, in the future, if we plan to support uh, WebKit or, you know, Firefox, you can just import those directly. So for now, the only um, importable object is, um, is um, Chromium. And while we're also trying to make sure that, you know, the different methods that we have are asynchronous, because since we're basing it off uh, Playwright, where um, we're, uh, Playwright is, you know, mostly um, like asynchronous, um, whereas K6 itself is not really um, asynchronous. So we're trying to uh, make sure that, you know, our APIs are starting to move towards um, ASIC support. So the first step that we've done is um, we've changed um, some of our methods such as the wait for navigation as well as the um, element.click. So those are now um, async methods. So it should help in you know the stability as well um, of the test. Um, and yeah, we've also updated our documentation. So I know um, we've we've had a few comments from uh, the forum where we were still lacking a bit in terms of in, in terms of the actual guidance. So now we've actually updated it with a lot more information around um, our API. So yeah, that's really awesome. Okay, and Paul, I think you had a few things to announce as well. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to uh, anybody that uh, is like organizing a go meetup or it could be a testing meetup or something here uh, stateside, I guess, uh, you know, definitely reach out because uh, I'm looking to go on the road myself uh, like Leandro and uh, start uh, kind of doing some presentations in person to some of these meetup groups. And then, uh, you know, if you have a go go group, you know, I can bring some of these as the prototype shirt. You know, you can possibly <laughs> get yourself one of these sweet babies right here. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so uh, what do we have to do to get one of those? <laughs> I, I don't know. I've I've got a connection. Uh, I've got a connection. Uh, <laughs> I only have this um this Crococon shirt. Crococon, yeah. yeah. I, I I run out of all my basic swag because I was wearing it all the previous days and today I'm like I don't have any, any K6 swag to wear, so I, I, I only have a plain black t-shirt. Uh, now yeah and actually yeah. too if anybody's going to be at KubeCon or uh, in here in North America or uh, even uh, GopherCon uh, find mm -hmm. me I'll be around and be uh, I'll have some swag to hand out so seek me out secret special swag <laughs> exactly exactly it's on the down low <laughs> okay well marie why don't we um talk about about what, what your role is i guess for people who didn't catch that that last one um yeah. just a week or so after you joined yeah, so I'm the newest member of the uh, DevRel team uh, here at K6, but I am more Yay. focused towards the browser um, automation side and mainly helping out the XK6 browser um, team as well as, you know, the um, community. So, so far, I've been trying to answer like a few questions as well from our Slack group. So um, it's, it's, it's quite useful for me as well, because if I um, am able to help someone, I'm able to learn more about XK6 browser uh, in more detail. Uh, but yeah, so um, it's, it's been, I think, just over a month since I last joined. Um, and here in uh, K6, they have this um, they have this thing called the week of load testing, 
although I didn't really do week of load testing, I did week of browser. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess what I want to show um, to everyone is what was that about? Um, like, what did I actually do in terms of, you know, the different days that um, I spent during my week of browser testing, some things that I, you know, really like, some things that I still think needs improvement. And yeah, I think just the current state of um, browser testing um, with K6. So yeah, I, I guess just for a, a bit of context as well, like the, the week of testing thing, um, even though it's called load testing, I think the idea is that people come in who are new and have fresh eyes and that beginner perspective is super valuable because they ask questions that, you know, maybe we didn't address in any of the documentation. Yes. And, you know, sometimes when you're working on something, it's easy to miss these things that are obvious to new joiners. Um, and it's I think you're the first one that has focused specifically on XK6 browser. Yeah. Oh, oh no, to Paul, the people yeah. are already taking you up on, <laughs> I, I on your part. offer. <laughs> 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 so how can they get in contact with you, Paul? Yeah, I, I don't know. Leandro is the actual official chief swag officer. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, CSO. CSO. No. Yes, yeah. the CSO. Uh, so <laughs> maybe we should have. I guess the uh, easy thing is here. Episode. Just comment. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Sorry, um, Marie. What did you say? Contribute. I was gonna say we need to might we need to might have a dedicated office hour episode just in terms of getting swags. <laughs> <laughs> Swag is a trigger word for devs. <laughs> okay. Is. Well, Marie, would you do you wanna do you want me to share your screen? Um yeah, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna present the same slides that I did during my week of browser um, testing. Um, and we can just maybe talk about, you know, some of the actual learnings, like the features. Um, but just to note to everyone that when I did this um, presentation, I was still using an old version of XK6 browser. So what I'll probably do is um, if there's a specific, you know, code that has changed or something like that, I can maybe talk more about how that's changed in the uh, latest version of um, XK6 browser. But yeah, um, my first thoughts um, actually already was like, Wow, <laughs> like I've I've never encountered um, a tool that you know can do both front end and back end performance testing at the same time. So on my previous role, um, you know we were using K six for testing our different APIs, but for the front end, you know we were using different tools and uh, personally as well. So I was using Cypress and I had to use a different you know, plugin that can then um, report, you know, some Lighthouse scores to measure my web page performance. So it's, it's, um, it's always been like trying to use different tools. Um, so to me, when I first learned about XK6 browser, its initial, you know, um, messaging as to why it's being created, um, I think it has a lot of potential. So um, it's really sort of um, showing that yeah, there is a need for it. Um, our customers and our users need some tool to do both front end and back end performance testing. So to me, I was just really excited to get my hands on with the XK6 browser. Because um, I didn't really had much um, knowledge first around, you know, what XK6 browser was. Um, the office hours was actually very useful for me. So there was an XK6 browser episode where um, Nicole, you know, chatted with um, Robin, who's our CEO, and then Mark and Tom, where they basically discuss or introduce XK6 browser uh, to the community. And what really stood out from that chat was um, there was an actual need for it. So historically, K6 has uh, stayed away from, you know, using real browsers because, you know, we want to make sure that we provide the best experience for testing backend systems first. But now that K6 is, 
you know, more stable, it's now really mature, then we can now support or we can now try to uh, introduce browser level um, testing. So it was also quite nice um, to see. So during my first day, I also watched an Office Hours episodes where, um, you know, um, the team. So uh, Thomas, who's one of our front end um, um, engineer, actually used XK6 browser to test the K6 Cloud app, which was kind of awesome to see. Um, and it shows that, you know, we're also testing our own tools, um, dog fooding, which, which is, yeah, um, it just made me, um, you know, gain more knowledge as to, you know, how it actually being used by different teams. And I think this was one of the um, first few um, episodes that I've watched as well. And um, it's just really, you know, about showing how you can use um, XK6 browser to drive browsers and then do browser um, automation. So it was a lot of, you know, learning and just taking notes um, on the first day. And I've added this, um, this um, message from our CTO as well during our presentation, because uh, in one of the videos, he said that, you know, um, they're trying to create like a Swiss army knife <laughs> for building um, reliable systems, which is great to see because um, K6 is now trying to, you know, um, like introduce other types of testing as well. You know, not just like solely focus about performance and uh, load testing, but we're also trying to, you know, dabble on like different areas. So um, I've added that because I found that, yeah, it was it was really awesome that he said that. Uh, day two for me, so I've, you know, done all my learnings. Uh, day two was, you know, game time. Like, let's actually try to install <laughs> um, XK6 browser. So um, I, I'm i not um, familiar with Go. So this was my first time uh, in Go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, more, like, I'm more used to JavaScript. So... Um, like, yeah, this was the first time of installing Go. Um, the installation, um, I found it a bit fiddly, but just because of my lack of experience. And I think this is why um, Paul said a while ago that, yeah, with the introduction of the different experimental uh, modules, it's now easier to basically import because I had um, a few issues with, you know, trying to build a custom binary um, that has x 6 browser. Um, but yeah, that was mainly due to my lack of experience uh, with Go. And the I want to say it's not just you though. I also mm -hmm. I also had issues with it to start off with because I also had never done anything with Go until I joined K six. Yeah. Um, and the next bit is just really building the K six binary with an X K six browser um, extension. So the um, command i just copied that from um one of the readme files and when it came to actually creating a basic test so i decided to keep it simple um i did mention during the week of um like browser testing when i did this in person was um, I was initially confused as to why there were so many steps in terms of launching the browser and then opening the page. And I didn't understand why we had to create a new context. But after spending uh, some time, you know, reading the latest documentation, and which is why um, if you haven't seen the latest documentation for XK6 browser, um, it's really going to be useful. So um, this browser dot new context. So this is actually optional. So um, I could have just um, type browser dot new page and that will open up a new page. Um, the purpose of this uh, browser context is if you want to handle like um, you know, multiple um, independent sessions. Um, you want to have like separate um, cache, separate cookies, then this might be um, really useful. But if you only have, I guess, one test, then it's an optional. So you can just do browser that new page. Um, and then the rest is just really simple, you know, code. So I've started with a really basic test of just going to my homepage taking a screenshot and then closing the page as well as the browser. So, so far that was really good. 
but then when it came to actually um, running the test, so um, I had some issues with because um, I, I I wanted to use the XK6 browser command and run it on a different folder, but I forgot then to um, added it into my uh, path environment variable. So um, I had to go to the directory first where I've um, installed XK6 browser and then run it uh, from that directory. But after configuring um, my environment variables correctly, I was able to just run it on um, any um, like directories that I'm in. So yeah, I managed to um, to um, bypass that. Um, let me see if I can play this video. Okay, I think everyone can see. So this was just like a demo of like running the actual tests. Um, and if I remember correctly, cor uh, correctly the first um, thing that I've noticed and I've mentioned this as well during the um, presentation was there's a lot of logs. So apart from the actual metrics you can see here, <laughs> yeah, there's just too many logs. And because for me, um, I get really confused because I, you know, I think that maybe it's an error with my actual script, but actually it's an error with my application. Um, but then after um, looking at the different metrics here, um, oh, it's gone. But yeah, I think you've seen the different metrics. So after you've run the tests, it's quite nice that you get um, presented with all the different front end performance metrics, as well as the existing um, HTTP specific metrics that we have as, um, as part of basic score. Um, ah, this one, yeah. So one of the first few tests that I've tried to um, execute was, you know, I am on my website and what if I try to just click on a specific element, wait for that navigation and then take a screenshot of the page. So initially I couldn't bypass this um, specific error. So I keep getting, you know, some timeout and ultimately it was failing because of um, like an exception race around, you know, clicking an element. Um, however, having said that, after um, after bumping my version to the latest XK6, I was able to you know fix this, and I think supporting asynchronous um, you know way of doing things. So I've mentioned that page that wait for navigation as well as the element dot click is now um, asynchronous. So that has improved um, the way uh, my test has run, and when I uh, rewrote. Uh, this test a while ago, I was able to click on the element that I want, and then I can see that it has landed um, on the correct page. So definitely try out the latest version of XK6 Browser in case you're experiencing um, any of these timeout errors. Marie, um, I wonder if you could, for those people who are watching, could you maybe explain to what the difference is? Like, why is it important that now it's now it supports um, those functions asynchronously? Yeah, because if we think of um, browser automation, so some of the actions can take uh, longer, you know, um, to uh, execute. Um, compared to other functions. So if we just do everything like synchronously, we might see that the click um, function has executed while the actual navigation is not finished yet. Um, if we continue to keep doing it this way, um, you, we might end up with a lot of, you know, test failures with, you know, like test flakiness. So now with um, asynchronous, like we are sort of waiting that, okay, let's wait for the, page to navigate first and then when that has uh, resolved we can then perform uh, another action such as you know button clicks or taking a screenshot so it does help in making your test a bit more um, like stable cool um, this was a really funny um, error that I got. And I think I remember when I shared this with the rest of the team, everyone just laughed because um, as a tester, I like to, you know, explore different, um, you know, types of, you know, um, data. And in this case, I wanted to see what will happen if I try to pass in 
a file that doesn't exist. And I got a really long-winded error message. And I remember saying this like to the rest of you know the team, like, why can't it just tell me that the file doesn't exist? Um, and it does say, but it's it's done it in a very long-winded way. Um, it's saying as well here at the end that oh, there's some you know resolution error. And to me, like it should just say, oh, the file um, you know was uh, was incorrect. So hopefully we can um, fix this in like future releases because I think it's not specific to X86 browser. Um, it's also an issue with uh, K6 itself. So that was an interesting um, bug that I've encountered. Um, as you know, X86 browser is still relatively relatively new, and the team is aware of this. So um, we have um, made some updates as well. Um, to try to make sure that some of the error messages are much um, like user friendly, because when I was getting some of the errors, um, it would it was just uh, displaying a really long stack trace error, and because I'm not a hardcore uh, developer, um, I found it really confusing as to what was actually wrong uh, with my script. So the team is currently working on uh, improving a lot of the error messages. So hopefully, yeah, we get more user-friendly error messages. It looks like um, we've got Rose agreeing with you too. She said mm -hmm. she doesn't like that error because it's the error that comes up if you try and import something the wrong way too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's really an annoying um, error. <laughs> um, Cool. So I think by day three, um, I was like, okay, I got this. I've tried and experimented, you know, a lot of the different um, commands. I can run it. Um, so I decided to do more examples. And um, if anyone is watching from the testing community, there's a, and you might already know about this um, particular test website, but you can't see it from here because I'm passing it as an environment variable, but this was actually the RESTful uh, Booker platform that uh, Mark Winteringham from Ministry of Testing um, created, and it's a really popular uh, website for, you know, UI test for API testing, visual testing, all those things. So I've decided to use that. Um, and you can see here that, yep, I'm using more commands. I'm even setting the set viewport size just to try and experiment what will happen if I pass in the actual width and height of my screen. And then here you can see that I'm using custom data attributes and actually typing in the different data. Um, and you can see here as well um, that, you know, once I've submitted the um, actual form, um, rather than using K6 um, check, which is the default way of, I guess, writing an assertion. So I've experimented with the K6 uh, Chai.js. So this is actually imported from K6 uh, Chai.js. So, um, I am more familiar with the Chai.js library, so it was nice to see that there's also a custom library that we can um, import, and it's and it's um, like customizable uh, that that it will actually work with uh, the K6 ecosystem. Question for you, Marie. Do you mm -hmm. think that now, going forward, every time you create a K6 script, would you always use Chai.js? I, I was actually um, thinking about this because um, the past two days I've been helping the X86 browser team do more um, like product testing because we um, wanted to see how it integrates well with the K6 cloud. And while I was writing some of the tests, I was always defaulting to the expect because maybe it's just me, but that's just, you know, more sort of familiar to me. Yeah. Um, so I think it really depends because if I want to have a much more readable um, assertion or a much more readable description of my text. So um, if you're familiar with, you know, Chai or like with Mocha, for example, they have the describe blocks if you're familiar with Jess. And like I said, because I'm more used to JavaScript, my first sort of uh, instinct was to just use that. So maybe it was just me, but I think you can also just use the check 
um like you know way of like asserting things but for me because i preferred the readability then um my go-to was just to use the k6 uh chai js library have you actually tried the kawa library from ivan skiba it's um it's a no. test runner for k6 but it is yeah. inspired by mocha oh nice yeah i need to play around with that cool yeah i'll, I'll, I'll sorry to interrupt <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. So um, with K6, with XK6 browser, so you might notice here that the syntax. So this is so if you um, if you check the release notes, I mentioned as well a while ago that you are now um, importing the Chromium um, object directly. So this is just the previous way uh, of doing this. But yeah, pretty much you can pass in the same options. But um, basically, if you want to slow down, you know, your actions. So what I've tried here is I've just passed in, you know, uh, 500 milliseconds so I can uh, try to slow down all the input actions, the navigations. Um, so basically just playing around with all the different options out there. And yeah, this was the K6 Chai.js that I was talking about. Um, using it is really simple. You just need to import the uh, describe and expect and then just um, copy the actual um, index.js file as to where um, it's from. It's funny that uh, slow-mo, every time I see that, I, I always <laughs> think about it. It's like they need to do an implementation where it's, you know, it'll be typing and then it'll be, oh, wait, back, 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 back. And then typing uh -huh. again, back, 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 you know, for the way that I type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that would be kind of fun to see that. Yeah. <laughs> So to me, day three, so I was trying different things. So um, the first thing that I noticed was IntelliSense wasn't supported yet. So I did ask, you know, the developers if we're going to support IntelliSense soon. And uh, there is an issue uh, that we have raised uh, for now because we're also changing our methods to now be um, async. It doesn't make sense to, you know, create all the um, like type definitions. So we might as well wait until we've converted all of our methods to asynchronous. Um, so I did try that, and then um, text selectors. So if your um, one of your go-to selectors is just by text, so currently text selectors are not supported, but you can um, have a workaround and use XPOT instead. So at least, you know, you, you're, you're not blocked if you want to just uh, select an element by text. You just have to use XPOT um, for it. Um, I was experimenting with NPM scripts. So, um, you know, I've created a sample NPM script, which will basically pass in the environment variable. Um, and then the actual um, XKX browser command, and it does work. So if people want to try and, you know, create uh, custom NPM scripts, especially people who are more familiar, um, you know, with JavaScript, then that is also supported. So, yep, I've already talked about K6 Chai.js. Um, and interestingly, because, yeah, one of my questions was, can we try to integrate Jess or Mocha test framework? And I'll definitely have a look at that GitHub um, project and see how it works. Because for me, if there is some sort of, like, Mocha test runner, like, equivalent uh, that we can use, I think it will... Um, have a much more improved developer experience because, like, Jess and Mocha are, you know, they're one, they're uh, two of the biggest or two of the most popular um, test framework in JavaScript. Yeah. And finally, yeah. Sorry, I, I was just saying we need to get that uh, Ivan Skiba on uh, on the yeah. hours here again. I know he yeah. has been in the past, but uh, yeah, yeah, he's I would written be a lot really of, interested yeah, to see about yeah. that. Yeah, he's done a lot of yeah. cool things, and then this JavaScript as well. So yeah. that would be nice. So, so what you're saying is serious. that you just want to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, we could absolutely have him on. I think last time we had him on, it was several months, like maybe a year ago now, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But he had written like 10 extensions for K6. Wow. Uh, Ivan yeah. Skiba, Skiba 
by the way, for others, is not someone who works at K6. He just really uses it and we're, and luckily loves it enough to create a lot of extensions for his own use. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, I definitely think, yeah. need to send him a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and then I think this was the part that I really enjoyed discussing uh, with the team because I wanted to, you know, um, share some ideas. So I know with other popular test framework, test retries are, you know, something that, you know, people have asked. So it could be good if we can also support um, automatic, you know, test retries um, like in the future. Um, provide insights as well on uh, slow tests. So I know we've got the performance insights as part of the K6 cloud. So we could also provide insights on, you know, we, which are like the slowest tests. So they could then focus on which pages uh, they need to optimize more. So I think that would be really cool. Um, tagging tests. So um, coming from, you know, background where we don't really want to run like all of our regression every time, then we can maybe employ, you know, tagging as a mechanism to try and pick, you know, different types of tests. So you can have a test that are specific for nightly builds um, and you just need to tag it as at nightly. Or if you just want to run specific, you know, smoke tests, then yeah, I think um, tagging is, um, um, you know, it, it, it could be beneficial although at the moment there are ways around it so you can create like separate um like files or you know separate groups maybe or separate scenarios but i think introducing a tagging um like mechanism would be really useful as well um intercept network request so i've added this so because um i know that you know from um other like popular testing uh frameworks out there they've got a way in intercepting network requests so let's say we want to um intercept a particular um, api call and rather than relying on uh the data that's being returned so we just want to really um, focus on measuring the web page performance, then we can perhaps intercept specific API calls to make the tests, I guess, more stable in terms of like test data. So maybe that could be something that we can also tap in um, in the future. Um, UI test builder. So I think this isn't just, um, you know, uh, something that I've noticed, I know other people have also, um, you know, suggested that, yeah, uh, in the future, having some sort of UI test builder, because we have the K6, um, like, test builder, like, maybe the, um, the Chrome extension as well. So having um, a way of authoring, you know, the browser tests much quicker, I think this would be, um, you know, of great appeal, because even uh, prime, uh even test frameworks like Playwright. So, so uh, for example, Playwright, they have a mechanism of, you know, just recording and playback as well, uh, Cypress as well, and, you know, Selenium IDE. So I think we could also tap into having some sort of UI test builder. Um, it doesn't mean though that, you know, we're lazy in terms of writing a test. We just want to find a, like a faster way <laughs> of like writing all these different tests. Um, day four, so this was definitely mix and match. So what I mean by that was um, the power of x 6 browser can really be, you know, um, like shown to everyone if we can also combine it with K6 score. So um, if you're already familiar, you know, with K6, you can use the um, options, you know, that we, um, that we have as, you know, like default. So if you want to, um, set like different, you know, stages, set some different thresholds. We can even use different um, executors. Then it's very easy to just configure that with XK6 browser. So um, in here, I've just selected a very low number of um, virtual user because this is um, spinning up real browsers. So we don't want to necessarily spin up a lot because 
we have to also keep in mind that um, testing on the browser is more expensive. It's, you know, more uh, resource intensive. So in here, I'm just um, testing like what will happen if I, you know, launch five browsers and then 10 browsers after that. Um, but yeah, it just works um, like seamlessly. I didn't have to install, you know, additional um, stuff because it's already um, built in with the K6 score. You disappeared, Nico. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry, I was hoping nobody had <laughs> seen that. But anyway. Cool. Ah, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So I panic when I saw this panic error. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this error? Um, but yeah, I think um, because maybe I've chosen a higher number of um, like virtual users, there was a panic error um, that happened um where it couldn't create you know new page so it could be dependent on you know my machine that i'm running it but this is why um it's good to you know mention to the community that while we're offering you know browser level we still need to be i guess careful that you know don't just run like a hundred you know virtual users on the browser so it's still a good idea to run it on a protocol level but if you want to spin up like one or two browsers then yeah um x 6 browser can really help with that so yeah if you see this panic errors probably because you've um created <laughs> a lot of virtual um like browser users um i also experimented with you know multiple scenarios um so in basically the context for this test was i want to have uh two scenarios where i'm trying to visit you know different url one was um slash messages and one was uh slash news and it's um, executing you know different functions so what i wanted to try was how well it will work if i use different or in this case it was the same but you can also use different um executor you can use um, a different number for the number of virtual users and the duration and it just work uh seamlessly well uh this is an example um uh function so this was the messages and you can see that it's just really a um like a very simple um browser tests although when i was playing around with this initially because if you're using k6 you can also use custom tags um however custom tags aren't supported yet in xk6 browser um i have raised this as an issue so uh the team is gonna you know uh, look and prioritize because i think it will be a very handy feature if we can pass custom tags especially um, especially on you know the page that go to method because we can then uh filter it you know by like custom metrics by using a tag. So at the moment, um, if I pass this tag in, it doesn't really work, but you know, it doesn't harm your test, but um, just, you know, be um, like informed that custom tags doesn't really uh, work yet in XK6 browser. Um, threshold, so um, yep, it's just really the same sort of format, but um, rather than passing in the HTTP specific metrics, you can pass in the different um, browser metrics instead. And you can see here that I'm actually using the URL um, to differentiate different um, like thresholds. So in here, I'm saying that for the messages.php, I want this threshold to be defined, but for the news.php, it's this. So you can really customize it um, like very easily. Um, iframe support. So this is something that um, I guess, you know, because iframes, they are a pain uh, to automate. So it's not just with x 6 browser, but if you're using other tools out there you you know might like pull your hair <laughs> trying to automate iframes but uh for now we currently don't support um iframes that well so i was trying to automate this um internet um heroku app and there is a um corresponding um method in playwright called dot frame but every time i uh use that uh it's saying that that it hasn't been implemented yet so um, it's still, you know, work in progress, but for now, if you try to automate iframes using x 6 browser, um, it's probably not going to work. 
And I think um, this was a uh, plugin that was created by one of our community members, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I didn't actually knew that this uh, existed until I did my week of uh, browser testing. Um, but this is just a really nice way to visualize the uh, HTML report. So if you want to, I guess, uh, share the um, like the metrics in a visualized you know, way and in an easier digest format, then you can also uh, try the HTML reporter. And you can see here that the different custom metrics that I've specified are uh, being reported as expected. Um, this one, so I... I guess with this, so now I can actually run tests on K6 Cloud, but it's still on like our staging environment. So at the moment, uh, just, you know, to be clear, the XK6 browser is still not yet available as part of our K6 Cloud, um, but I can now test it on our staging environment. So during this time, um, I wasn't added to like a, like I, haven't got the specific uh, permissions, but since I've been helping the team the past couple of days, um, I can now you know run some tests on our K6 cloud staging. So hopefully, when that is more um, like stable, then we can now also introduce X K6 browser uh, running on K6 cloud, which will be amazing to see. Marie, would it be um, a good time to ask Quest to go through yeah. some questions, yeah. or do you want to do yeah. that afterwards? Um, no, I think we can we can um, ask some um, have some questions as well. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, first was this very first one actually before we even started streaming. <laughs> Ugo yeah. Chuku Anajemba says, "Can K six be integrated with Playwright for load testing?" Yeah. So uh, this is a really interesting question because um, what. I've demonstrated was how you can use XK6 browser for, you know, running like browser, um, like performance testing. Whereas I think what the question was, if we can actually use it to run load tests. Um, so to the best of my knowledge, um, I don't think there is like a K6 integration for um, like for load testing specifically for uh, Playwright. But I know there is the um, there is a um, community plugin called XK6 Playwright, but I think that one doesn't support load testing as well. Um, so I guess yeah, uh, long um, long long answer short is that a word? <laughs> um, I yeah, it, I I don't think it doesn't um, like it doesn't have that integration. So you'll have to use. Um, or, you know, you'll have to create a separate K6 script um, if you want to run some load tests. Um, but I know if you just want to focus on like browser performance tests, then um, Playwright can actually tap into, you know, different um, APIs. So if you go to your um, dev tools and go to the um, and go to the performance tab. So whatever you can see there, you can also try to uh, code using um, like Playwright. So there is a really interesting meetup that I saw um, from one of our uh, users. Um, but basically, if it's for load testing specifically, I don't think there's a direct integration with Playwright. Yeah, I think um, your best bet is XK6 browser, really, because XK6 Playwright is very specific and it kind of took a different approach. Um, yeah. It's more, it uses the Playwright Playwright Go library, um, but that also means that it isn't as tightly integrated with K6. So with XK6 browser, you can have them both in one script. Um, mm -hmm. Another question, though, from let's say let's see reviews and vlogs says is there any possibility of updating an excel file at runtime mm, yeah i don't think we are supporting this at the moment with xk6 um browser um i don't know if we have any like experimental or you know extension for 
um, like trying to update files within K6, but for X K6 browser specifically, we don't currently support updating files. Um, similarly, there was a question um, this morning if we if X K6 browser also supports uploading uh, files. So um, the scenario was they want to automate a page with um, an upload, you know, um, file functionality, and then they want to upload a specific file. So at the moment, x browser can't actually do that, although um, we have an issue, you know, for it. So um, hopefully we just need to prioritize it in the future. But at the moment, no, we don't have any um, API for updating Excel files or uploading files as well. I would push back on this a little bit and question why you want the Excel file. If you want to upload something, then you can use it not not in XK6 browser, but you could you could just upload it um, just using K6 core. But if you're because they specifically said runtime, right? I'm thinking that the reason is probably that um, maybe you want to be recording the metrics from the test. And in that case, I'd say there are way better options than putting it in an Excel file. Like you, there are a lot of output extensions for K6. You know, you can push it out to any stats D compatible um, backend, or you can use Prometheus Remote Write. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or K6 Cloud. Even if if your goal is to get those metrics, I think that there are probably better options. If you just want to write data to a file for some other reason, there is an extension. I haven't tried it personally. I just know about it. Um, but it is called XK6 file. Mm -hmm. And that does let you write to file, write files using from K6. I would also be careful though, because K6 is supposed to be, it's built to be very distributed and scalable. And when you start getting into writing files, then there's a question of like, how do you get all those files from, you know, potentially hundreds of load generators? It might not be the most performant way to do it. Instead, I would say like, look into writing to a database instead, like the Redis, um, the Redis extension that Paul was mentioning that's in the experimental modules now. I think that probably will be more sustainable. And then also you don't lose data from like just that one load generator um, falling over or something like that. Yeah. Or you could do uh, something like uh, what Mustafa was demonstrating last week in that uh, you could write that as stream of uh, output to Kafka and then have something oh, yeah. that just reads that from the Kafka stream and then writes it to a Excel file or a CSV or whatever. So yeah, there's plenty of options. <laughs> And there's another one from Ambrish Kumar. Google Vitals are not there in report. Yeah, so I think we also spoke about this in the previous um, like office hours. So um, at the moment, you know, we're not supporting a lot of uh, browser metrics. Like we're we're supporting, you know, a few of them like browser DOM content loaded, uh, first contentful paint. Um, you know, first meaningful uh, paint, and there's been um, some discussions as well uh, internally whether or not we should be aligned with, uh, you know, the core web uh, vitals. So I think this is definitely something uh, that we need to discuss a bit more. So at the moment, we don't support. I guess if we're talking about the same, um, like web like vital metrics that you see from Lighthouse, then it's slightly a bit different from what the XK6 browser um, is, you know, reporting. But because we are, um, you know, I think we are um, trying to get the data that's being, because some of the metrics are recorded as well by the browser. So if Chromium is able to um, detect some of the metrics and we just need to, you know, do something um, about like, you know, the data that have been passed. Um, but for now, no, we um, are not, I guess, like fully compatible with the X gate with the uh, core web byte um, with the core web vitals. Um, but yes, there has been, you know, some discussions around internally ar around, you know, do we need to replace, for example, 
first meaningful paint with largest contentful paint because first meaningful paint has been deprecated uh in favor of largest contentful paint so yep i think there will be more discussion about this within the team because it's something that's always um you know come up uh from the community Okay, um, another question this time from Jillian Lombardi. She says, can K6 metrics be uploaded to BigQuery? And I, I can uh, kind of answer some of this because, uh, yeah, so we do have the XK6 SQL. Now, it's not an output extension, I don't think, uh, but we do have some other ones for SQL databases. So it, it's one of those things where it's like, if it's not directly already supported for BigQuery, there's probably without too much work to uh, actually adapt it for BigQuery. I have no idea. So I'm glad that you do. You know? <laughs> and that's why I was so quiet. <laughs> yeah, it's All good right. to have three of us here, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's and uh, yeah, and I may be uh, just you know remembering things incorrectly, but there is an XK6 big query out there now. Again, I don't Ooh. know if it's an output oh. module or if it's a uh, you know just for testing where you can write queries from your uh, JavaScript, but uh, yeah, mm. so it's one of those things, it, it could be probably fairly easily adapted. Cool, interesting hackathon project, yeah. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Earn yourself a t-shirt. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Marie, um, maybe we can go back to your reflections. Yeah. So I think, um, wait, add this again. Oh Oops. Gosh. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> so the last day was, yeah, just really um, reflecting on, you know, what um, I think it's really great, you know, with XK6 browser. Um, and I've actually have a slide, so this might sound controversial. Like, you know, people who are not familiar yet with XK6 browser might say, oh, why are we having another tool? Like, how does this compare with Playwright and Cypress? And the messaging that I want to, you know, say to the community is like, uh, we can't really compare, you know, XK6 browser with existing tools. So we're not trying to compete with Playwright. We're not trying to replace, you know, or compete with Cypress. Um, we know that, uh, you know, there's um, like other frameworks out there that are more mature. Um, but what we're trying to solve is, you know, the need to have a tool for both front end and back end performance testing. Um, there's also some scenarios that are quite limited from the protocol level. So let's say, you know, from a user experience point of view, you want to check what, what will happen if, you know, um, there's like a spinner that's forever loading um, in your page. And you can't really test that from a protocol level, whereas from a browser level, you know, you can probably um, write some assertion that, you know, is that spinner um, like invisible now after, you know, a certain period of time, or maybe you can take a screenshot and, you know, do, uh, um, um, do some checks. So um, to me, day five was really about, okay, um, I can see the potential for XK6 browser, you know, but we have to, I guess, um, also remind that, you know, it's not going to be the same as player. It's not going to be the same as Cypress. So it's, it's solving a very different um, unique problem. And, and this is why with all of, you know, like testing or automation problems, we should like first focus as to what the problem that we're trying to solve rather than focusing on the different tools. So if you have a problem in your company where, you know, apart from like doing load testing and apart from, you know, checking what will happen if your backend systems um, try to process like thousands of requests, what will also happen if like there's a um, there's a load test going on and you also want to check what's happening in the browser. So Yep, XK6 browser can definitely um, help with that because I don't think that's something uh, that we've seen um, that, you know, um, that is currently, I guess, um, like supported by like other tools out there. And yeah, I think um, 
I, I do have a few more slides, but it's not really related to my week of browser testing. But uh, just to give some context, I also did an accessibility audit <laughs> for for our K6 um, cloud. So that was quite um, a fun um, way of trying to, you know, introduce access, not introduce, but, you know, emphasizing that accessibility is uh, very important. So we also understand, you know, within our team that we have things to improve on. And it was, you know, great to share the different um, audits that, you know, I found out. Um, and yeah, like, I think in terms of like the color contrast, like our design team uh, is already trying to, you know, improve it, like make some adjustments in the charts. So, yep, that was the last part of my uh, presentation really was just about sharing um, an accessibility audit. That was great. I one of the reasons that I definitely wanted you to to share your experience on office hours is that I think sometimes some companies are are just all about like what's good and you know what's cool about their products, which is understandable. But like I think we learn more when we share the things that are pain points for us, the things that you're mm -hmm. saying like about the error messages. Pretty much everyone who's used XK6 browser is probably going to have the same experience. So. I, I think it's really good to just have these things out in the open and to be transparent about yeah. about how about the state of the development right now of of XK6 browser. Yeah. yeah and see. I would also just, you know, I guess like to welcome um other, you know, people. So if you're trying to um I guess um play around with XK6 browser, like, you know, we've released, you know, some new changes. Um, and if there's anything that, you know, can really help improve, um, like, you know, the actual project, then, you know, you can raise it via the community forum, or we have a Slack channel, or you can even raise it as an issue directly in our GitHub project. So the more we know about, you know, these different issues, um, the better it can help the development team in terms of prioritizing which ones are, you know, much important. Yeah. Yeah, I was just even going to add that, uh, I mean, it's kind of exciting with XK6 browser because, I mean, uh, K K6 slash Grafana is really investing into this technology now. I mean, because obviously we have you, Marie, and then uh, we've got, we've expanded on the developers. We've got Anchor and uh, Ben have joined the team. Yeah. And then also uh, Mihail, who is one of our core developers, he's he's consulting. <laughs> yeah, he's the, yeah. He's an XV6 browser, yeah, member. <laughs> Honorary so, member. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, yeah, so, I mean, that's there's going to be a lot of changes going on and improvements. So it's it's going to be really cool to see what's uh, what's going to happen over the next, what, quarter maybe as, yeah. as all these things start coming to fruition. So should be exciting. Yeah. Um, two things that I want to mention before we wrap up. First is that if you like the three of us developer advocates, maybe you want to be our boss because we are looking for a director of developer advocacy. And I've posted the EU and the US um, kind of job job ads there. I, I hope that you can forward this to some cool people you know who might be interested um, because we're looking for cool people only, especially to be right. our manager. Cool. So <laughs> yeah. we also have cool swag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> And the second thing is next week, we are going to have our CEO and now the VP of product for Grafana Labs as well, Robin Gustafsson, and our CTO, Powell Suvala. Both of them have been on here before, but we're just going to get them on next week um, to talk about everything K6 related and basically where the where we're going as a company as a product as a platform so if you do have any questions then either leave them in the comments to this video or find any of us on twitter really or or tweet at k6 underscore io if you have any questions that you want us to definitely make sure to ask that'll be a good one um, and i guess thank you marie for for coming on to share your experiences Thank you both yeah. for joining me this Friday. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me again. <laughs> Paul is wordless. We should have <laughs> All right. sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should have.
have a nice intro, so it's not always this weird thing. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.